All right, so um, let's start just sitting up tall. Just making sure my cat is good to go, are you good? All right. <laughs> So we'll start sitting nice and tall when you're ready. We'll roll the shoulders. And before we start, let's just stretch the neck real quick, um, just to help relax the neck muscles. Let's first just let the chin fall to the chest and let the shoulders drop back. Nice long spine and just allow the chin to slowly fall with gravity towards your chest. And then let's roll the head over to one side, doesn't matter which side. You can play around with rotating your chin or your ear to your shoulder. Whichever one of those options feels good today. And if you'd like, you can reach the opposite arm out to the side if you want a little bit more. Let's take three breaths. Okay, if you did choose to reach the hand out, bring it back to your lap. Rotate your chin down to your chest and then over to the other shoulder, either rotating chin to shoulder or ear to shoulder, or you can kind of slowly rotate between both and we'll take three breaths. I'm just kind of going by feel. And we'll slowly rotate your chin back to your chest. And to bring the head to neutral, roll the shoulders up and back a few times. And we'll do one more where it stretches um, a specific muscle kind of more in the front of your neck. It connects right here and then it connects towards your sternum. So we'll take whichever hand, I'm gonna take my right hand and place it over onto the inside of my shoulder, kind of above the pectoral muscle. And I'll just gently press away just a little bit. So as you press, then you'll look to the opposite side. So since I have my right hand to my chest, I'm gonna look to the right. And it might be a subtle stretch. You might feel it, you might not. Um, if you're still not feeling anything here, you can start to rotate your gaze upwards to the sky. So it'll kind of be a stretch right here. Just be nice and gentle. Take three breaths. So it's kind of like looking away and looking slightly up. Good. We'll bring both hands to your lap, head to neutral. We'll take left hand to your right, just above the right pectoral muscle on the inside of the shoulder, press away, just ever so slightly, and then looking over to the left. And then any amount, you can look up if you'd like, or look just to the left. And nice big breath. Slowly release, come back to center, and we will set up for a little meditation moment here. I'll turn my music off here. We'll turn the palms facing up to the sky. We'll rest the hands onto your lap, palms facing upward. And then we'll bring the first finger and thumb to touch. Find that connection. And we'll close the eyes when you're ready. Allow the shoulders to relax in that space between your shoulder blades and your throat. 
your chest and rib cage. And just taking some breaths, entering into your space in your bedroom or living room or wherever you're at in your house. Keeping your low back supported, however needed. Checking in with your posture to help support the low back. It helps to kind of tilt the pelvis forward and sometimes adding some height underneath the hips with a blanket or pillow can help with that. Let's start today at the root chakra or the very base of your spine. Just at the tailbone, the sits bones, and just feeling the sensation of the surface that you're sitting on and feeling that surface support you, ground you. If and when the root chakra, muladhara, is imbalanced, it can be hard to focus on what's important to you personally, to your life journey. And when there's a lot of things going on in our lives, in the world, then sometimes this chakra can get a little misaligned. And it's harder to just sit and feel like you're grounded and part of this like walk of life rather than just existing. So rooting downward, visualizing the base of your spine, rooting down to the ground like roots of a tree. And we'll take a few moments of silence to just listen into your breathing and any sounds around you, outside your house, inside the room, and even inside your mind, just observing. And I invite you while we take these few moments here together to breathe nice and deeply, breathing in, and allowing the breath to travel upwards from the base of your spine up to the crown of your head. <clears throat> and then with every exhale, imagining the breath or energy traveling from the crown of your head down to the base of your spine. So creating the upward and downward motion of your breath. And I'll, I'll let you take those moments now as you relax your facial muscles and your eyes.
on your next inhale, take a big breath in as usual and a big breath out, emptying the lungs completely. And then let's all together take a big breath in. Fill the low belly and holds. And then open mouth, exhale. Let's take two more. Big breath in through the nose. Fill the low belly like a balloon. Open mouth, exhale. And last one on your own. Inhale in, filling the low belly like a balloon, holding it. And when you're ready, open mouth, exhale. We'll bring hands together into prayer position in front of the heart and bow the head forward. And I ask you to repeat this mantra silently in your mind. I am grounded. Super simple. I am grounded. Repeat that a few times to yourself silently. Before we open our eyes, I invite you to just observe the way you're feeling right now in this moment. One, to observe how steady and how grounded you are to this surface you're sitting upon. That even if someone was trying to push you over, you wouldn't budge. And also to just observe so we have something to compare at the end of this practice. So take a deep breath, maybe repeat the mantra again if you'd like. Observe for a moment. And slowly and mindfully start to open the eyes, looking down at your fingertips. And then let's sweep the arms out and up to the sky, looking up to your palms. And then let's side bend, whichever side you want to start with. Reach the other arm down, reaching upward, up and over, grounding both hips equally to the ground. Breathing into the side body. And then inhale, come up through center, reach arms up into prayer, up overhead. Exhale, side bend, other side. Pressing through the fingertips or palm to ground both hips evenly. <clears throat> and we'll inhale, come back through center, hands in prayer overhead. And with hands in prayer, we're going to just interlace the fingers and turn the palms up to the ceiling. Nice big stretch. You can look straight ahead or up to the sky. And then let's take one more side bend on each side. It'll be a little bit less of a side bend, but try to keep both hips grounded. Good, breathe, take it to the other side. And breathing again, come back to center. And then to bring the arms down, we're gonna roll your wrists slowly all the way down. 
and then roll or shake out the arms or shoulders. And then we're gonna come to tabletop. Tabletop position. And my cat is watching, how cute. Thank you. What a good helper. We're gonna come to hands and knees. I'm gonna use a blanket under mine. And start with some movements of your own. I'm gonna start with some cat cows. So maybe start with those, or if you want, you can take some um, puppy dog stretches or even a brief uh, child's pose for a moment if you need to. Just get some movement going. We've been taking a nice winter break. In the winter time, it's so hard for our bodies to move. It's like we're so cold, it's hard to move. So we're gonna get the movement in right away. So we've been sitting for a while. At least I have been sitting for a while. Lost in the sits bones, open the front body, curling around, belly button to spine. Let's move back and forth. Take two or three more of whatever movements. Fabulous. We'll come back to center, tabletop. I'm going to turn my music on really low. If it sounds really weird and distorted, please let me know. I will um, turn it off because I know with uh, streaming, if I'm playing music, it could sound funky. So we're going to find our balance between all four limbs. Get the fingertips and pads of the fingers grounded. Then we're gonna extend uh, your right leg back and we're gonna reach the left arm forward. Check in with this wrist. If this is too much flexion for the wrist, you can come to your fist or use a prop here. Um, or you could even just turn the hand out slightly and make sure that all five fingers are supporting the weight of the hand. So it's not just in the wrist. So find your balance and we're going to engage this right straight leg behind you. So engage the muscles and then slowly lift it up, flexing the foot and pointing your right toes to the floor. Good, find the balance, it's a little wobbly. It's not an easy balance, but engage the core and take a big breath in, big breath out, curl and round. Try to curl knee towards your elbow Push the floor away. Good. Inhale, lengthen. Reach through the sole of that right foot. Press the heel and spread the toes. And exhale, curl and round. Ooh, I'm gonna fall as myself here. This is not easy. Good. Inhale, lengthen. We're gonna do three more. Exhale, curl and round. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, round, engage the core. Inhale, lengthen, last one. Exhale, curl and round. Good, plant both hands to the ground, straighten the right leg back again, curl the toes under, stretch the calf muscles a little bit. You can go forward and back or just stay still. Okay, then lift that right leg up a few inches, and then we're gonna cross it over to your left, crossing it over that left foot behind you, curl the toes under, and then looking over your left shoulder, looking over towards your right toes, breathe into the right side of the body. Next inhale, look forward, both knees back to the mat. Brief child's pose. 
Just take a breath or two or three in child's pose. Next breath, prepare for the other side. We'll extend the left leg out, right arm forward and find your balance with the supporting hand and your core. And when you're ready, lift it up. Engage those left leg muscles. Imagine if I was to come up to you here and try to push this leg would be a little wobbly, but it'd still be nice and stable because the leg is fully engaged. Good, inhale here to lengthen through the fingertips and the sole of the left foot. Exhale, curl and round, belly button to spine. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, curl and round. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, curl and round. And go ahead and finish three more on your own. Rest when needed. Once you finish the last one, both hands come down, plant the left toes back down, keeping the left leg straight, stretch the calf muscles of the left leg. There's some stubborn muscles to stretch sometimes. And we're going to lift the foot up when you're ready and cross it over to the right side, outer edge of the mat, and looking over the right shoulder over to your left toes. And one more breath. And we'll look forward and cross the legs, both knees back to the mat. Brief child's pose just for a moment and come back to that mantra of being grounded. I am grounded. Take your time and eventually find downward dog. So setting up for down dog. Pedaling out the feet, saying yes and no with the head. <clears throat> and anytime you can rest when needed, as you know, Check in with the fingertips and the pads of the fingers again. Get the weight evenly distributed through the hands. If you ever notice a lot of um, wrist pain when you're doing any of these poses, I would definitely suggest getting um, just really cheap wraps. You can get them super cheap. You can wrap your wrists up just to give them some support. Otherwise, just rest when you need to. And we'll take a few breaths here. Eventually finding some stillness and letting the back of the neck completely relax. Letting the weight of the head fall heavy. Breathing nice and deep once to get kind of settled into this pose.
Take one more breath to prepare. If you are resting, slowly make your way back to down dog if you're not already. And then we're gonna tiptoe forward to the top of your mat. Tiny little steps to get there until you can find a comfortable forward fold. Bend the knees a little bit at first or a lot. Just give the knees a slight bend of any degree for this first fold. You can be still or you can sway side to side if you'd like. Get some pressure off the spine and the neck. And on your next breath in, breathe deeply and lift halfway, creating a flat back. Exhale, fold back forward, let the head fall heavy. Inhale, halfway lift, fingertips touch the floor or knees or thighs. Exhale, fold back forward, allowing the head to fall completely heavy. One more, inhale, halfway lift, reach to the crown of the head. Exhale to fold. Ground the feet. And really slowly, we're just gonna roll up one vertebrae at a time. So take your sweet, slow time to roll back up, letting the head come up last. And just allowing each vertebrae to just reset back to center as we find a tall Tadasana, Nansen pose. We'll turn the palms forward once you come all the way up. Half my body is cut off, but no worries, I'm all good. Palms roll forward, shoulders roll down and back. And while you're here in your Tadasana mountain pose, close your eyes, find your balance between both feet equally. And just feel again that sensation of grounding. That again, if the wind was blowing strongly you wouldn't budge it's like your feet are glued to your mat. Awesome. You can slowly open the eyes slightly here and I'm just gonna adjust my camera here so I'm not super cut off. We're gonna take tree pose. So hopefully that'll work. That's good enough. So find your Tadasana mountain pose. Look for a drishti or focal point uh, maybe on the floor or wall ahead of you, just a spot that's not moving. Bring your hands to your hips, shift your weight over to one side, doesn't matter which side you want to start with. And start to externally rotate the leg that we're going to lift, so rotating the knee out as much as it'll allow, that's comfortable. Engage this um, glute min here and the glute max, that'll help keep it externally rotated. Engage the core, nice and tall, grounding downward. And when you're ready, find your tree pose. If you want to just keep the foot still on the ground, but kickstand it on the ankle. Or if you want to bring it up to your calf muscle, hands stay at hips or heart center. And just take five breaths here, just practicing. Resting when you need to. And when you come out, if you fall out, slowly make your way back using those tools of the drishti, the grounding, the core, the glute max of the lifted leg. Practicing our patience with poses like this too, because it can be frustrating. So keep your breath going. We'll take a few more here. Slowly bring the feet back down to the mat, shake it out, roll it out if you need to. I'll face you guys for this one. Get nice and grounded to your surface. So 
it off some if it helps to get set back up. And I like to bring hands to hips and shift the weight, externally rotate, engage this glute muscle here, as well as the core, find that focal point, and we'll find tree. Decide what kind of tree you are, the location of this tree, if you're a palm tree on a beach, or if you're a Christmas tree out in the woods. Or there's so many types of trees. Weeping willow, you could bring your arms up, be a weeping willow. <laughs> Take one more breath here, if you're still with us on this pose. And then we'll slowly bring both feet down, shake it out, roll it out. Ooh, I got my yoga block. <laughs> Fabulous. I'm gonna move my blanket out of the way. We're gonna come to the top of the mat if you're not already there. We're gonna come to the front. And then with, let's see, um, let's set the right foot back first. Doesn't really matter. We'll set the right foot back and we'll, actually I'm gonna take my socks off real quick. I just realized I'm too slippery with these socks on. All right, so we're gonna set the right foot back for warrior two. That's what I was trying to say. So warrior two, I'm sure you guys don't really need to see my feet. You know what to do here. So lining heel to heel, front left toes, face forward, right toes face towards whichever wall you're facing. And when you're ready, we'll reach the arms out to a nice strong warrior. Yes, oh, you guys look so good, looking good. Good. And then I'll invite you, you can bend and straighten the knee a few times if needed. And think about equal grounding with both feet, both legs, not just this front one, both feet are Nice and grounded into your mat. Fingertips are reaching in both directions, front and back of the mat. And nice and strong. We're gonna take three more breaths just holding. Try to keep the breath moving. One more breath. And then we're going to straighten your front leg and reach the arms up and touch the palms overhead. Good, we're gonna re-bend the knee, sink back into warrior two. And inhale, reach it up, straighten the arms up overhead, reaching, reaching downward and upward. And exhale, settle back down to warrior two. And inhale one more time, straighten the legs, reach the arms up to the sky. And then we're just gonna turn your toes out to either direction so that you can face um, the wide side of your mat into a wide-legged position. We're gonna bend the knees and then just reach the arms to either side for goddess pose. Um, as many of you have done before in this class, think about drawing the tailbone down so that we can keep the low back nice and protected and engage your low core. And we're gonna just stay here for three breaths. If you want more of a challenge, you can practice with lifting your heels for a moment, but I'm not even gonna do that today. Good, one more breath, it's been about two. And inhale, reach the arms up to the sky, straighten the legs. And then we're gonna just swan dive forward. You can adjust your toes how you need to point them in any direction and then swan dive all the way down to the mat 
reaching fingertips to props or the floor. Let the head fall heavy. And any amount, bend your knees, any amount if needed. And just nice wide-legged forward folds. And we'll inhale and lift about halfway and then walk in your fingertips back to the front of your mat. So you'll walk your hands back to your left foot so that your right foot is now at the back of the mat and your left foot is forward. We're gonna curl the right toes under. You can keep this back knee up or you can bring it down to your blanket if needed. We're gonna plant that right hand to the inside of your left foot. And then we're gonna twist. We'll reach the left arm up and twist. So again, back leg is lifted or down. Great, both hands plant forward. Take a big breath in and lift the back knee if you need to, if it's not already, take a breath in and breath out, step it forward and fold forward, breathing out all the air. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. And inhale, let's sweep the arms out and up to the sky, come up to standing. And then exhale, hands to heart center. I'm gonna lift my camera up again. We're gonna step back to warrior two on the opposite side. So I'm gonna switch to the side of my mat so you can see me. So we're gonna step your left foot back, right foot stays forward, and find your warrior two. Take your time. Bend and straighten the knee. When you're ready, reach the arms out nice and strong. Awesome. And we'll take a few breaths here. You won't hold it super long, but just long enough to get some nice effects from this pose. We're doing a lot of grounding and these war this warrior pose will really just help that extra push of being nice and strong this week. We're, we're the yoga warriors. I know I'm super cheesy. We'll take one or two more breaths here holding. Good, and then let's move. We'll inhale, straighten the legs, reach arms up. Exhale, sink into warrior two. Inhale, lengthen, straighten limbs. Exhale, deepen into that warrior two. Inhale one more time. Exhale, sink warrior two. And then inhale, lengthen, straighten the legs and turn the toes out to either direction. Then we're going to sink the hips, bend the knees into goddess. Reaching arms out to either side. Good, three breaths. This is a good one for strengthening the root chakra as well. So think about that fire building into the base of your spine. Fabulous. Straighten the legs. Inhale, reach the arms up. Big exhale, swan dive forward. And let the head relax. Hold here for a moment. I'm just adjusting my camera again. Good. Inhale, lift about halfway, reaching your fingertips in front of you. And then exhale, we're gonna take a twist. So we'll walk 
your left hand maybe a couple inches or farther or you might even grab the opposite foot and then inhale right arm reaches twist fingertips or palm to the mat or hand to foot feel free to bend the knees here more if you need to and then we'll switch exhale to switch inhale to twist to your amount that you choose. And exhaling, both hands come back forward to the center here of your mat. You can take a brief, just forward fold here and center. Then as you're ready, breathe and walk your fingertips over to the front of your mat so that you'll frame your right foot. So right foot will be forward, left foot will be back. And as you start to transition, curl the left toes under coming into a runner's lunge. And then your choice here, if you'd like to drop the knee or keep it up, um, lowering the knee will create a little bit less intensity for some and planting left fingertips or hands in the mat or block or whatever you got at your house. And then we'll twist, right arm reaches and breathe. Breathe into the space between your shoulder blades. And take a breath in and then big breath out. Both hands come back forward. And then we're just going to step. If the back knee is lifted, bring it back down to the mat. And then we're just going to step back to hands and knees, curl the toes under, brief downward dog to walk it out. Maybe shake the head yes and no. Then we'll take child's pose. Knees come wide, toes together. Arms either reach up alongside the ears or you could take the second variation and bring them alongside your hips if you'd like. And let the hips slowly sink down with gravity. And most of us, some of, it depends on the anatomy, it depends on your hips and the wideness of your hips and all those things. So for some of us, um, the hips will not touch the heels, others they will. If they will not touch the heels, you can even add some pressure to the palms if you'd like. Or sometimes too, rocking the hips a little bit side to side can feel good for some people. So you can try that too. And repeating the mantra again in your head, repeating, I am grounded, and you can add other things into the mantra too. I am present, I am focused, I am centered. So many things you could customize that mantra with too, or you can just stick with I am grounded. Feeling the forehead touching your mat or your hands, if you stacked your hands for your forehead, just feeling the third eye relax as it touches something. Take one more breath, and as you're ready, we're going to transition to your back. And once you come to your back, hug your knees into your chest, nice and tight, imagining your 
hugging a good friend. I'm imagining I'm giving you guys a big hug because I know when I see you all again, I'm going to give you all a really big hug if you'll let me. <laughs> Which hopefully will be this year. We're going to set those intentions, put that out into the world. Turn the rock side to side. Or make circles with the knees, give the back a massage. I want to take a nice simple twist, reach the arms out to the side, let the knees fall to one side, stacking the knees, head in any direction. Nice big breaths. Breathing slowly, transition to the other side. Using that breath. And relaxing the body once you're twisted. Taking nice big breaths into the rib cage. Slowly with your next breath, come back to center <clears throat> and taking any last stretches that you'd like to add here. So you can take those final poses, take maybe 60 seconds or so to just do any of those other movements that sound good. I'm going to come closer. We're going to set up for Shavasana. Our first Shavasana of 2021. Or at least the one in this class, unless you guys have done it on your own, which I have, I am not, I'm, I just want to share something real quick that I like, I think before I did teacher training ever, I always just assumed that yoga teachers had all their shit together. Um, but actually that is not true. Um, if anything, when I'm like saying things, I'm saying it also to myself to remind myself. <laughs> so, cause you know, we're all human. We're not all perfect beings all the time. So it's nice to have this community and we can all get together and just practice and create this energy in our bodies together to help help us survive. So we'll set up for Shavasana here. Where did I put my journal? Here it is. I'm gonna put my phone on silent just in case. <laughs> Ooh, I hear the church bells going off in my neighborhood. So we'll close the eyes and get comfy when you're ready in Shavasana. Blanket if you need it, or if you want to switch over to a different surface like a couch or bed, you do have the ability for that here. Taking some nice slow breaths to ease your way into Shavasana. Relaxing all the tiny muscles around your eyes, your ears. your jaw and your throat. Letting go 
as much as possible of any anxiety or worry stored in your chest and in your solar plexus and in the low belly as well where you have your enteric nervous system where you get those butterflies in your stomach where sometimes you can feel anxious about whatever something small or something big Relaxing your shoulders, melting away any stress or weight carried on your shoulders and neck. Relaxing arms, hands and fingers. Relaxing both hip joints, letting the legs fall to either side naturally. Remembering one of our yoga terms, which is one of the part of the eight limbs of yoga known as Santosha, which we've brought up many times on and off throughout all the sessions. Just as a reminder of Santosha, which is an everyday practice of daily gratitude and commit. Well, it's a daily commitment of gratitude. And with gratitude, through gratitude and contentment, we can find trust. Trust in our choices, trust in ourselves, trust in the ones we love and trust in the world. And even though some days are harder than others to practice gratitude. It's still something that we can create and not every day is going to be easy. It's human to feel confused about what the best decisions are that we have to make. But we must have faith in ourselves, our choices, the universe, and our final destination of whatever that is for your life. So we'll close the eyes and just absorbing everything that we just did with our bodies and minds and breath. Shavasana.
slowly take a big breath in through your nose, sending the breath to the lowest point of your spine, filling the low belly like a balloon and exhaling the air out through the mouth. Start to slowly take teeny tiny movements. Fingertips, toes, wrists, ankles. Possibly turning the neck side to side or a full body stretch. Slowly, mindfully rolling over to one side, using an arm as a pillow for your head and stacking the knees comfortably as you lay on whichever side. And I ask you here to take this moment to remind yourself of your gratitude for the day. Or one, or, one or a couple things that you're grateful for first things that come to mind. And as you're ready, start to press the floor away from you, coming up to a tall seat, sitting tall, meeting with hands in prayer position in front of the heart and breathing as usual in and out, filling the lungs, emptying the lungs. Grounding downward into your mat or surface. And as you breathe here, I ask you silently to yourself, how does it feel to be you right now in this very moment. Thank you so much for being here for the first class of this year. It's so exciting to have you all here and I appreciate you. Namaste. Thank you guys so much.